Hi, and welcome to Calm Soon, what is it, 654 uh, Social Marketing. Um, social marketing sounds a lot like social media, but it's not. Uh, as you'll learn this first week, this is definitely not a social media class. Uh, social marketing is something that predates social media, what we would consider social media by, I don't know, like 40 years, 30 years. Um, basically, what this class is, is it, it, it's a... Um, I like to think of it as a public health class, but maybe that's too narrow. Um, it's really a class about how to um, market um, ideas related to pe behavior change to people. So in the same way that we would market a um, a, a product or something like a, this is an empty bottle, but in the same way that uh, somebody uh, marketed Deer Park water to people, um, the whole idea is that we can also market um, behavior change to people, attitude change, those types of things. Um, so social marketing is often used in, in um, the public health arena to, oh, I don't know, um, persuade people to wear a face mask during a pandemic or whatever, right? Um, it's usually associated with nonprofits and things like that. But even if that's not your goal in this, uh, you know, um, uh, corporate MA program, right? Even if you're more I don't know, inclined to go into the corporate sector. I hope that you'll find that a lot of the principles that you learn in this class can be used um, in any organization, right? It's really, it, it's about um, the tools of campaigns uh, to persuade people on different scales, uh, but particularly with an emphasis, as your textbook says, to do good, right? It's um, marketing for good. Um, okay, about the textbook. Um, I don't have it. <laughs> I just, well, okay, there, I have so many issues with the textbook. So um, we did, you know, I've been sheltering in place since, I don't know, like March, um, I think March 12th. This is right before spring break. And I knew it was going to be like a long haul, but I don't know. I, I somehow thought I was going to be like slipping back in the office and I didn't. So I don't even have the textbook for this class or more importantly, the, the publisher would probably think. Since um, I started teaching this class in 2016, a new edition of the textbook has come out. The old version is a teal color book. There's a picture of it on your syllabus, so if you wanna see what it looks like, you could also look at it on Amazon. Um, and then the new edition is hot pink. And um, I do like to update uh, my content to use the new book because normally it has updated examples and I did flip through it. I, I got the desk copy back in, um, I don't know, December or January or something. And I looked and I was like, okay, so it's basically the same, but more or less. That's It's more or less the same, but they um, use more updated examples. Um, and I was going to, this is a good opportunity for me to turn over my lectures and everything. Anyway, the long story short is I don't have either book with me right now because I'm still at home. And it could be the su summer I go and I, you know, um, it, get into the office, you know, with gloves on or whatever, and get all my books and everything. But for now, I don't have it. <laughs> but don't worry, I'm, I'm very knowledgeable in the content and I have read the book. So, um, but the reason I'm going into this really long winded um, description, uh, in part is to get you used to that, sorry, uh, but also to let you know that um, whatever version of the book you get is probably going to be fine. Right now, I have not updated the class for the new edition. So when you watch my summary lectures, it's going to be referencing page numbers, possibly from the old book, okay? Um, the fifth edition. So if you want to get the fifth edition, you will be completely fine. But I really think if you want to get the newer edition, you'll be fine too. Um, I would do whatever works better for your budget. And the book can be uh, rented. I think uh, there's digital copies of it, uh, which Maybe that's what I'll do, actually, if I if I feel like I need to reference it to help you or answer your questions throughout the semester and I don't get back to campus. I don't know. We'll see. Um, although I love that that book. I, I usually at this time would like hold it up so you could see it in the video if you go and watch old intro videos. It's got like all these like coffee stains on it that like it's like pure nostalgia. It reminds me of like other classes, different times. I don't want to leave my book. It's like a teddy bear for an academic. Um... So yes, you d and let me just say the book is really not optional. You need this book um, to succeed in this class. A lot of you have probably, <laughs> how do I say this without being so scary? I don't want to be scary, but a lot of you have probably had my, um, I looked at the roster, so I know this is true, but I can't remember how many. Many of you, though, I know have um, had me before for um, COM 655. 
lovely class, fun, good content. Um, but that class, I have to tell you, was a walk in the park compared to this class. Um, and not, not because the content is necessarily harder, but the pace of the course is a lot tighter, right? There's not, uh, let me, there's not as much flexibility um, as what you had in the other class. You're still kind of on a routine where you're doing basically the same thing each week. But um, again, it, it, well, actually, I think one of the biggest differences is everything in this class is going to build on each other. So what you do um, starting this week will affect what you do next week. And then what you do in week three is going to be affected by what you did on week one and two. And um, what's really great about that, well, actually, I'll save the good stuff until later. What's bad about that is that if you screw it up, you know, on one week, it's harder to get back in the game, right? So you really have to, there's a lot more pressure on you in this class to keep up with that. I'll also just warn you that when <laughs> I designed that class not to be a summer class. In fact, this is, I will warn you, this is the first time I'm teaching social marketing in the summer and I had to make some sacrifices and I had to treat it like a summer class where I condense more material into a week sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes than I ordinarily do. Um, and so I think that's going to add to the pressure of it. And again, I'm, I'm really, I don't want to scare you, but I really did. I was like, wow, I really think that this class compared to, to, to Com 6 to 655, if you had me for that, um, is night and day in terms of kind of like the demands. Um, and also the, the relationship that you and I are probably going to have, um, cause it is going to, on some, some weeks, it'll require a lot more, um, communication between us and 655 usually isn't like that. Um, again, I would not even mention this if I didn't have students in different um, classes, but it, it's it's just my way of making sure that like your expectations are set appropriately so there's not surprises. Um, but now the good news. The good news about this course, though, is because it's like literally a class where you're working on the same th thing throughout the week, which I'll get to in a second. Um, I think, and th I've, I've noticed this in my feedback of the course, too, there's a lot more satisfaction that comes from from it because you can really see the trajectory of like what's happened over the semester and how you've built upon everything. Um, so I, with, you know, great sacrifice comes great reward. I don't know. It, it's really, it's just another online class. It is, but, um, it's different. So, uh, just keep that in mind. Um, so what is it that you're going to be working on all semester? That's an important point. So basically you are going to design your own social marketing campaign. You're going to pick one topic and you're going to do, go through all the social, the steps, which your book outlines, the steps of a social marketing process. Each week is going to be one step normally. Once or twice, we're going to have to do two steps in one week or something like that, you know, whatever. But um, more or less every week, is you're going to do a worksheet that you're going to hand in Sundays, 11.59 p.m., yada, yada, yada. Um, and that's going to be a little installment for what will become a final proposal where it's basically like you're pitching this campaign. Um, what we do if we are actually designing a campaign is we are hoping, we're usually pitching it to a funding agency and we're like, hey, you know, um, National Institute of Health, will you give me some money so we can do this campaign or what, you know, and you have to really spell out everything about how it's going to work and why you've selected the audience you have and, you know, why this campaign is needed and how you're going to, deal with the marketing on media or whatever the case is. That's what you're going to do with a small caveat, which is that because it is summertime, I cut off the last steps. So you're going to do most of the steps for social marketing. And then at the end, you'll just take all of the little steps that you've done along the way each week. Think about each worksheet that I have you do, because that's pretty, most weeks you're going to do a worksheet. And each one of those worksheets is like, one of the little, one of the sections of your final proposal, the idea is, and it doesn't always work out this way. Um, some of it is an individual difference thing with students and a time thing or how you like to operate. But the, the way I designed this course, ideally, is that at the end of the semester, you shouldn't have to do one big research paper. All you should have to do is take all of the little pieces of work that you've done throughout the semester and kind of put them together and you should have more or less everything you need for the proposal. You'll just have to massage everything together 
you know, make it look pretty, those types of things. So uh, the final project for this course, in other words, um, hopefully should not be that much effort if you keep up for the rest of the semester. That's what I really want. A little, you know, work um, each week should pay off in the end when hopefully there won't be so much for you to do. Um, if you're interested in seeing what a final proposal looks like, I, I, um, I don't remember if it was a student from last semester, the semester before, actually. I have an example of somebody's final proposal. I don't remember what grade it got. It definitely got an A, otherwise I wouldn't post it as an example. I've got other examples, too, if, if, if you reach out and sometimes it might help you to understand what this class is all about if you can kind of see the final outcome you know um because that is one risk with this class is i think sometimes people get lost in the weeds because i will give you feedback on your worksheets and you will be like this lady is just being real weird about i don't know the wording of my purpose or whatever and you're you're allowed to think that but i am still gonna grade you <laughs> based on whether it's done correctly or not but it's not it's really it's not because I have a stick up my butt um I do but it's not because of that it's just because I um the uh, you what you will find is that like I said before the class isn't very forgive, forgiving because if you don't do things in the right way to begin with it actually makes it harder for you to do other things down the line so I am like on you and I got to make sure that you're doing everything right with the step-by-step -step process. So I am, um, again, I, not to compare, but if you had more 6, 655, I'm much more of a stickler in this class. Having said that, um, in this class also, I get to know my students a lot better than I normally do in other online classes. Because sometimes I have found that the best way to just get around all the stuff that makes online classes really crappy. And let's be honest, there are some really crappy aspects about online classes is for us to just talk like on the phone. I mean, nowadays, like I'm doing zoom, like my life depends on it. I mean, and to be honest with you, I hate zoom, <laughs> like zoom fatigue is a real thing. So we don't have to do zoom unless you want to, it might actually be helpful in some um, instances for me to look at things or whatever, but a phone call goes a long way. Um, and if you're struggling with one of your worksheets or if maybe uh, uh, you just want to chew me out for one of your worksheets, but you don't tell me that's why you're calling, you, you say like, oh, okay, we should talk because I have a question about something. And then you can chew me out. No, you can't. You can't. But you, I know how the whole passive aggressive thing works, but it's fine. If The point is, if you want a dialogue about what's going on, let's just talk. I know it's an online class, but sometimes we can all save each other time by actually having a conversation so that we can better understand what we're trying to communicate because it's communication class. I don't know. Um, not all of us will talk on the phone, but I'm just telling you that in, in this class, I've actually been gratified by uh, being able to have a little bit more, more of a working relationship with my students. So you should not, the whole point of me uh, going into this long-winded thing is that you shouldn't feel shy about reaching out and asking for that kind of assistance because I can definitely provide it. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, the only things I really want you to know, everything's pretty self-explanatory in the syllabus, but the important things is, is you will have a worksheet just about every week that you will have to turn in by 11.59. It's going to be a Word document. You download that Word document, you type in your answers, and then you upload it to a Turnitin portal that'll be in the same folder that you got the original worksheet in. Usually, hopefully always, on Mondays, I will grade those worksheets and I will give you feedback. When I give you feedback, that just means that I write on the exact worksheet that you turned in. It stays in eCampus and when you wanna access that feedback to see my comments, um, all you have to do is click on it and there's a tab called grade mark. All of these, all of these instructions are on your syllabus, so don't worry. Um, if I'm talking too fast, you can go and look them up, but I just want you to know it's possible. And then once you have that feedback from me, like, I'm like, yeah, that's great. Go ahead. Then you can go on to the next step and complete your worksheet for the next step. So it's really important that, um, for me, that I grade your stuff as soon as possible. And I'm going to try to do that again. I don't think any, I don't think I'll have any problems getting all of the grading done by Monday. And then by Tuesday, if you want, you can start working on your next worksheet, which of course is due the next Sunday. Um, at some point in the semester, even just a few weeks in, you can already start working on your final project if you want to. If you want to wait until the last minute, you know, cheers.
whatever, do you? Um, but there's no reason you can't start working on your final project um, pretty soon in, okay? And then after you turn in your final project, the only other assignment is you're going to have to do exactly what I'm doing right now, which is sit around in your kitchen. P.S. I do have an office, obviously, but, you know, COVID-19. In the house, though, my husband, who works from home, he has an actual office. So he stays upstairs in his office with his door closed. And this is my very professional <laughs> office. I do. You can't see, but I am, like, at a desk right now. Like, you see, there's, like, a wall, like, right in front of me. Like, this is an actual desk, so it's kind of like an office. But um, anyway... You can do it in your kitchen, you can do it outside, you can do it wherever. You will have to just talk into a camera just like I'm doing and post it so we can finally see your face. Um, and it's kind of like a show and tell where you just basically highlight the interesting aspects of the campaign that you design. Um, I really design it to be a relaxed, fun component. So don't, if you're stressed about being in front of the camera, please don't be, worry about it later. And then hopefully when you read more details about the assignment, you'll be like, oh, okay, fine. Um, hopefully. Um, okay, so those are the main assignments though. So you've got weekly worksheets, final project, then video show and tell, right? Um, the only other thing that you need to think about <clears throat> is what you're doing this week. <laughs> um, this week, you're going to do not just um, your weekly assignment, which actually isn't a worksheet. We're not going to start the worksheets until next week. Um, you've got two quizzes you need to do on eCampus this week. One of them is um, a quiz on your syllabus. <laughs> so you'll read the syllabus, you'll look at eCampus, you'll take that quiz. The trick with this, though, is that it's all or nothing. Um, so uh, I think it's worth 20 points. If you get 20 points, you get 20 points. If you get 19 points, you get a zero. <laughs> but, 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 but you get to take it as many times as you want. Look, the whole point with a syllabus quiz is I need to know that everybody understands the policies in the class. So you can take the quiz as many times as it takes you to understand all the things, but I'm only going to give you credit if you get all of them right. But just keep taking it until you get it all right. Um, the other thing you need to do, if it was a, during a regular semester, not summer, you could do it the next week, but because I had to condense it, you need to go ahead, oh, we're jumping right in, and um, there's, a, there's a quiz on um, the chapter about the, the steps of social marketing that you're going to go through. So you need to read the chapter and then complete that quiz. So you've got two quizzes on eCampus to do. The other thing I'd like you to do is just give me a little introduction. I know that some of you guys know each other. I probably even know you if you've been in my class before, you know. Um, but actually in this class, it's, um, it, oh no. What the hell? <sighs> I'm going to have to edit that out. Uh, I probably won't. I'm going to try to go. Um, and I'm sorry I said the H with double hockey sticks. Uh, but I literally, I told my husband not to call. He's not upstairs right now. He's actually outside. I'm like, I'm going to do a thing. Okay. Um, the only thing I wanted to uh, um, uh, emphasize, hold on. Uh, oh, ooh, he's in trouble now. He's in trouble. Um, oh, the, sorry. The discussion board. The discussion board. So, um, uh, I know. We already know each other. Fine. And some of you I don't know. It would be great, by the way, if you could put a little, a little picture. So I have a, not because I need to know what you look like, but I just like to associate a face with, you know, somebody's work. Um, but uh, what's really important this week is I'd like you after, maybe flip through your book a little bit um, and really start thinking about the social marketing topic that you think you might want to focus on. Because we're going to move really fast. And I think as soon as next week, uh, you're actually going to have to pitch that to me and I'm going to have to approve it. But it's really important that you understand what social marketing is and what it's not. Every semester I have somebody who um, says that they want to do like a, they want to do a campaign to get more people out to, I don't know, um, uh, like women's basketball games. And I was like, that's nice, but that's like a for-profit type of problem. And social marketing is more like, what do we do for the benefit of society? So it would be like, maybe you have some COVID-19 related stuff that's been going through your head. Like, um, how do we reduce the number of deaths or how do we reduce the number of, um, 
of, of people getting infected by COVID-19 or whatever the case is, that would be a problem. How do we reduce the incidence of heart disease? How do we reduce the, um, how do we, um, you know, I don't know, like uh, improve like the water quality in West Virginia. Like, like think about some issue that you're passionate about. And it needs to be, again, not like a for-profit issue, but an issue that you're concerned about because of how it affects your community or people you care about or those types of things, right? Um, that's what I'm looking for. And there's not going to be like a right or wrong answer in the discussion post. But I will say that that I, I will try to give you feedback on the discussion board based on your ideas about things that I think might work or things that I might not work to try to help you. Because like I said at the beginning, everything in this class is very cumulative, right? It's like what you do on this discussion board is going to um, lead to, you know, or, or it's going to affect the things that you do um, on the next assignment. So in summary, what I need you to do is go on the discussion board say hi, tell me about yourself, and then tell me about some topics you would like to focus on all semester for your social marketing campaign. Complete that syllabus quiz. Um, and uh, remember, make sure that you get 100% on it. And if you don't, take it again until you do. And then finally, go ahead and read your first couple chapters and complete the quiz on the steps of the social marketing process so that you... Um, I, so you know what you've gotten yourself into. <laughs> um, but besides that, um, I think that is, unfortunately, a classic Dr. Cohen summary. Couldn't keep it under 20 minutes. Summary. Could be worse. Um, but on that note, I will leave you, and I look forward to seeing you on the discussion board and for the rest of the semester. Um, uh, hopefully we'll talk at some point, and if not, at the very least, I'll get to see you doing this at the end of the semester. So, bye.